Good morning. Welcome to Hope's online service. We're very glad you joined us and we're also very blessed. The, this is the third week of a series entitled Old Dog New Tricks. It's been quite good. I've, I've enjoyed it very much and this week's is entitled Forgiveness, Forgiveness, Forgiveness. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Rick Ravy. Those of you who do, well, you pretty much know that I never put myself in the doghouse. There's no need for forgiveness here. Well, that was a big lie. I better pay attention to you. We, uh, we struggle sometimes with, with the burdens and the sins that we carry, that we don't confess to God. We all need forgiveness, and we all need to forgive. But also, we should always remember that we have to forgive ourselves. I love you very much, and I'm glad you came. Steve, would you lead us in prayer? We give you all thanks and praise, O God, with every knee bowed and every tongue giving you praise. For in you is extravagant mercy and salvation from all that would destroy us. In the first of your mighty wonders you created the earth, dividing the watery chaos and bringing forth dry land. In the days of Moses you divided the sea again and delivered your people from their oppressors, leading them by fire and cloud to the land of freedom. In your child, Jesus the Christ, your reign of love and mercy has embraced all who live, and even in our weaknesses you uphold us. He was killed, but lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. Now, whether we live or die, we belong to you, and in gratitude we share your love and mercy with all. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise at all times, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen indeed. And good morning. This month we have an awesome opportunity to mission and outreach right in our own backyard. We are so very fortunate to be able to worship and for many of us to live in the Anthony Wayne School District. Now generally speaking, that's a place of great affluence and community support. However, just like with any school district, there are several families who are not as comfortable or well off. And that is where we here at Hope can lend a helping hand. August's mission of the month is the Anthony Wayne Local Schools Food Program. For those of you who don't know, hi, I'm Matt Zwire, a proud graduate of Anthony Wayne and choir director here at Hope Church. Uh, and also, I have the opportunity to call friend Kevin Herman, another member here at Hope, who happens to be the assistant superintendent for Anthony Wayne Schools. Now, initially, Kevin wanted to make this presentation for you, but it being so close to the start of school in this crazy time of unknowns, you can imagine just how busy he is. Hence, I'm talking with you this morning. Here's some information that Kevin and the other administrators at Anthony Wayne would like you to know. There are over 4,500 students in the Anthony Wayne School District, and a huge percentage of those eat food provided through the school cafeterias. Now, the schools keep individual track of each student through lunch accounts, uh, kind of like a meal plan of sorts. And that ensures that every student is fed every day regardless of individual situations or needs. Now, oftentimes those meals eaten through the school cafeteria are better and or possibly a little bit more nutritious than many meals that students might get at home. However, as you can also understand, sometimes kids don't or can't always pay for their food. Now, I'm not talking about those once in a blue moon moments when a student forgets to bring money that day. I'm speaking of those families and those family situations in which money is tight, when family dynamics change um, 
and not for the better. And as Kevin told me, uh, especially with this COVID-19 pandemic going on, many family dynamics have recently changed. Now the school, whenever possible, tries to pay for those parents and families who have fallen on hard times. This happens to be one of those hard times. About 10% of the student population at Anthony Wayne is on the free or reduced lunch program, and that program has its own financial sustenance. Most of the families participating in this program are covered as far as their children receiving consistent nutritious meals through school. Unfortunately, there are several other families in our area that have recently undergone financial implosions or who make just enough money not to qualify for the program, even though with them taking or technically making enough money, it is still nearly impossible for these families to pay for things like food on a daily basis. And furthermore, many of these families either don't know about the free or reduced lunch program, or sadly, they might be too stressed or proud to apply, especially if they've never needed or used the program before. And these are the families in particular that serve as our mission field this month. To help put into perspective the need that we have in our community, Kevin shared with me that when the schools closed back in March because of the pandemic, Anthony Wayne was still committed to providing meals to those students and families in need. And for the first couple of weeks there in March, the district provided daily and weekly meals to about 30 families. Now, as of the beginning of August, that number has grown to 109 families receiving meals through the school district an over 300% increase in just four months. Now the school is unbelievably grateful to those local area churches, including Hope, who have helped sponsor and provide meals throughout this time. In fact, Hope has sponsored the hot meals every Friday to help ensure that those kids also get food throughout the weekend. So thank you very much, Hope Church. But as you can tell, the numbers in need are climbing drastically. And this pandemic continues on and affects our local and national communities. And that's why this month, as schools return to session, we at Hope Church are supporting our young neighbors, literally our neighbors, in need. Outreach inspires outreach, especially when it is so local. And just so you know, any monies that you can donate will go directly to the food service program, not a general fund or anything else like that. So please consider, if you can, providing second mile financial giving this month to the Anthony Wayne Food Program. And even if you can't, we ask that you offer spiritual assistance to schools throughout our country. We pray for our schools, our staff, our students, and our families throughout this community in particular. May it be a safe and incredibly productive school year fueled through mental, physical, and spiritual nutrition. For any other questions you may have about this program, please contact our mission committee chair, Kathy Bethel. She can answer or find the answer to any question you might have. Thank you for your attention, Hope Church, and God bless you.
Our scripture reading today is Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Peter got up the nerve to ask, Jesus, how many times do I forgive a brother or sister who hurts me? Seven? Jesus replied, seven? Hardly. Try 70 times seven. The kingdom of God is like a king who decided to square accounts with his servants. As he got underway, one servant was brought before him who had run up a debt of $100,000. He couldn't pay up, so the king ordered the man, along with his wife, children, and goods, to be auctioned off at the slave market. The poor wretch threw himself at the king's feet and begged, Give me a chance and I'll pay it all back. Touched by his plea, the king let him off, erasing the debt. The servant was no sooner out of the room when he came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him ten dollars. He seized him by the throat and demanded, Pay up, now. The poor wretch threw himself down and begged, Give me a chance and I'll pay it all back. But he wouldn't do it. He had him arrested and put in jail until the debt was paid. When the other servants saw this going on, they were outraged and brought a detailed report to the king. The king summoned the man and said, You evil servant, I forgave your entire debt when you begged me for mercy. Shouldn't you be compelled to be merciful to your fellow servant who asked for mercy? The king was furious and put the screws to the man until he paid back his entire debt. And that's exactly what my Father in heaven is going to do to each one of you who doesn't forgive unconditionally anyone who asks for mercy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One, two, three, four. I heard the word, I felt the call, I've answered, I have prayed. I've done the work, I've walked the walk, and given you the praise. I've been the hands, I've been the feet, I've helped the least of these. But once again, I've lost my way, and now I'm on my knees. So here I am. Higher than the mountains, I keep climbing Deeper than the valleys where I keep hiding Wider than the seas, it keeps on reaching me Your grace is bigger than the fears, I keep on fighting Greater than the pain, I keep denying Stronger than the chains, you have kept me free. So keep on keeping me. I've sung the song, shined your light, and carried up my cross. I've shared the truth, received your love, and understood the cost. I've turned my cheek, dropped the stone, and know who I should be. But once again, I lost my way, and now I'm on my knees. So here I am, needing your grace again. That's higher than the mountains, I keep climbing. sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i'd be lost forever but 
forever you're the king's amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me Higher than the mountains, I keep climbing. Deeper than the valleys where I keep hiding. Wider than the seas, it keeps on reaching me. Your grace is bigger than the fears, I keep on fighting. Greater than the pain, I keep denying. Hey, it's Warren, and uh, this is the third sermon in a series of messages I've been doing called Old Dog, New Tricks. If you've missed it, I'm the old dog, and the new tricks are things that I've learned from the dogs in my life. Um, I talked about my dog Trixie, who liked to dig. I told you about my music-loving dog, Gracie, who likes to beg, as well as an old dog I had when I was a kid named Duke, who was clever and loved the newspaper. Um, this week, I'm, I'm going to tell you some more dog stories um, to kind of help explain, um, well, the concept of forgiveness. See, I had to ask Aunt Lisa for forgiveness uh, a few years ago because, um, well, I adopted a dog from the Humane Society without getting her permission. She was out of town, and Harper and I went up to the feed store in Ponchatoula, Louisiana, where the Humane Society was having uh, an adoption day. And I let my little girl talk me into getting uh, a chihuahua named Dexter. Um, now, Dexter um, only weighed five pounds. Um, but I had to explain to Harper that that little five pound dog um, was a mix between a Doberman and a St. Bernard. Uh, he was a dog that would bite you, but then he would go fetch help. Um, we stopped calling him Dexter and started calling him the Devil Dog. Uh, he loved Harper, but even Harper, when she would pet him, he would let her rub his neck and ears, and he'd be like, oh, it feels so good, and then he realized, oh, that's a human hand on me, and he would turn and bite her. Uh, he bit me, he bit both of our boys, he tried to bite Aunt Lisa, and that's when, uh, well, <laughs> confession, I've actually returned two dogs to the Humane Society. If you didn't hear the message about Trixie, go back and listen to it. Uh, I had to return her over her digging to save my marriage. In a similar way, um, we had to find a replacement for Dexter because my wife wouldn't allow us to keep that dog, but Harper uh, wouldn't allow us to come home without another dog as his replacement. So, um, we got Roger, and um, I may share a picture of me and Roger together riding in a car so that you have a sense of what Roger's like, but Roger is like the mix of a Labrador and um, a Dotson. So imagine a long, short version of a Lab. He, he's kind of a crazy dog, and he loves to chase his tail. Um, Harper asked me one time, why does Roger chase his tail? And I said, oh baby, he's a working dog. He's just trying to make ends meet. It's a dad joke, okay? When Alisa got home from uh, her trip and Harper uh, asked her mom about this Dexter, she said, um, Mom, why did dogs drink out of the toilet? And Alisa said, oh, it's because the water is a lot colder in the toilet than the water we put in their bowl. And I just had to wonder, why does my wife know that? Anyway. Um, couple other dogs that used to be in my life. We had a dog much like our Gracie dog named Sadie 
a shorter haired dog, more wire haired uh, than Gracie. But we had her when we were living with my mother-in-law who had um, another Dell dog, much bigger dog, um, that we called Marla. Marla was a female Rottweiler and Sadie was this little, you know, Spitz and Terrier kind of mix. Well, anyway, one night we were at the house and we were getting chicken ready for dinner and a chicken scrap hit the floor. And Sadie and Marla went at the chicken scrap and then the next thing I knew, um, they were in a dog fight, much smaller dog against a much bigger dog. And our son Sawyer, who was a little boy at the time, tried to step in between them. You've seen it, right? Small child doesn't understand dogs fighting and tries to break up the fight. The Rottweiler went after the little boy. I grabbed Marla by the collar and I picked her up out of the fray. I was holding her above my head. I was younger and stronger than, remember, Sawyer's 21 now and this is when he was a little guy. But when it was all over, Marla licked Sadie's wounds. And Sadie didn't hold a grudge. My mother-in-law did over me choking her dog. And what I learned in that moment is that dogs forgive easily. Humans, not so much. I adopted a dog without really getting on Elisa's permission and I had to ask forgiveness. I choked my mother-in-law's dog and had to ask for forgiveness. It doesn't seem like a day goes by when I don't have to ask someone in my life to forgive me for something. Which brings us to today's scripture. Matthew 18, 21 through 36. When Peter came to Jesus and said, Lord, when, when someone won't stop doing wrong to me, how many times do I have to forgive them? Would seven times be good? And Jesus says, I tell you, you must forgive them more than seven times. You must continue to forgive them, even if they do wrong to you, seven times, 70 times. He goes on to talk about in God's kingdom how a lender decided to collect money that was owed to him. And says that um, one debtor owed him several thousand pounds of silver and was not able to pay the money to his master, the king, so the master ordered that he and everything he owned be sold, his wife and children, and the money be used to pay what was owed. But the man fell on his knees and begged, be patient with me, I'll pay you everything I owe. And the loan officer felt sorry for him. So he told the man he didn't have to pay and he let him go free. Later that man who had been forgiven his debt ran into someone who owed him a hundred silver coins. And he grabbed him around the neck and said, pay me the money you owe me. The other man fell on his knees and begged, be patient with me, I will pay you everything I owe. But this first person refused to be patient. He got a judgment against the man who owed him money and that debtor was put in jail until he could pay everything he owned. Pretty much everyone saw what happened. They felt sorry for the man that was thrown in jail. So some of them went to the loan officer and told them everything that happened. And that loan officer called the man who owed him money in and said, you know what, you're evil. You begged me to forgive your debt. And I said, you didn't have to pay anything. So you should have given that other man the same mercy that I gave you. He was angry. So he had the man that owed him a debt put in jail to be punished. There's a lesson here, right? We must forgive our brothers and sisters with all our hearts. In this way, we reflect the forgiveness offered to us by God through Jesus Christ. Do you get that? We have been forgiven by God through Jesus Christ. We are called to forgive as we have been forgiven. Our ability to live in right relationship with God and each other depends on our ability to give and receive forgiveness. Look at the difference between a good marriage and a great marriage. And the difference is usually just three words. 
please forgive me. The difference between a decent relationship with our kids and a great relationship with our kids is just three words. Please forgive me. What makes it so challenging is that lots of us have been hurt badly by another person. Some of us were abused, can still feel the pain, the fear and anxiety that goes with it. Others of us know what it is to be cheated on. And some people will say to us in those situations, you just got to forgive and forget. You just got to move on. You just need to get over it. You just need to shake it off. But how do you shake off abandonment? How do you shake off abuse? How do you just move on past a betrayal or a lie? Forgiving doesn't mean forgetting. I don't believe that. People misunderstand Hebrews 8.12. Hebrews 8.12 says this, I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. Some folks seem to think that, um, that when it says that God doesn't remember our sins, it means that God can't even recall them. Uh, like you might say to God, do you remember when I stole that candy in third grade? And God would be like, I have no idea what you're even talking about. Like God somehow gets amnesia when it comes to our sin if we've asked for forgiveness. But is that true? The Bible makes it clear that God is omniscient. Which means God knows everything, past, present, and future. So it would seem kind of odd that God can't remember our sins in the sense that uh, God can't even recall them. The truth is when you dig a little deeper into this verse, you find that's not what the verse means at all. In fact, when the Bible uses the word remember, it's almost always talking about a relational sense of the term. So when God chooses not to remember our sins, it means that our sins are not the first thing on God's mind when God thinks about us. God could recall our sins if God wanted to. God just chooses to see through them and love us in spite of them. That's what's so amazing about grace. In fact, when it says that God will forgive our wickedness, the word forgive there literally means will cancel out a debt that we owe. That's what Jesus was getting at when he was preaching about forgiveness. How many times should we forgive someone who has wronged us? Some people say, well, I'm a golfer. Uh, I'll give you one mulligan. And after that, we're done. Other people love baseball, so they say, hey, three times, you know, three strikes, and then you're out. In fact, that was the Jewish law about forgiving people. So Peter feels like he's being pretty generous when he says, not three times, but seven times. You know, if I forgive seven times, isn't that enough? But Jesus responds, no, Peter, seven times, 70 times. Go back and read that. It's Matthew 18, 22. In the Bible, the number seven is used symbolically for completion or perfection. So when Jesus says seven times, 70, he doesn't literally mean to forgive 490 times. Jesus is saying, you should always forgive. Right? Not one time, not three times, not seven times, not 70 times, not seven times, 70 times, as in 490, but always forgive. Um, in the King James version of this story, the measure of currency owed is a talent. Um, one talent was the equivalent of 15 years wages for a common laborer. That's just one talent. We're told this guy owes a debt of 10,000 talents. That's 150,000 years of wages. Think about multiplying the wages you earn that many times. Can you imagine uh, someone owes you over $2 billion and you say, I forgive the debt. You don't have to pay. That would be a nice place to end the story about God's forgiveness, but that's not where it ends. Jesus says that right after being forgiven this huge debt, this man, this man goes and shakes down a person who owes him a few bucks, basically. Come on, pay up, man. I want my money, and I want it right now. 
There's some serious truths in this story that apply to everybody. First and foremost, understand that God specializes in, in unfair trades. God always gets the short end of the trade with us. The Apostle Paul wrote uh, this. This is 2 Corinthians 5.21. He said, God who made Christ, who never sinned, to be sin, God made Christ, who never sinned, to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We trade God our sin, and in exchange, God gives us righteousness. Another truth is that um, forgiving does not mean forgetting. One of the parts of this parable is that even though the debt was forgiven, it was not forgotten. Because when the man who owed so much went after someone who owed so little, there were still consequences to pay. That means it's genuinely possible to forgive someone, but also to not put up with their bad behavior. You can forgive someone, but you don't have to hang out with them anymore. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes a person's behavior is so destructive and so painful that you just can't be around them anymore. Healing is a process, and forgiveness takes time. And sometimes a relationship isn't even possible anymore. Or sometimes it's possible, but only with clear boundaries, clear consequences if those boundaries are violated. Forgiving does not mean forgetting. It means letting go of hate, letting go of resentment, letting go of grudges, offering forgiveness. Because forgiveness creates freedom. So let me end today's message this way. You've probably got some keys in your pocket or in your purse. Find your keys real quick and, and then hold them in your hand. Uh, pick one unique key and focus on that. It might unlock your car or your house or in this case uh, my office or something else. But today the key represents the power of forgiveness. In your hand you have the power to forgive someone, to cancel their debt, to set them free. But not only that, maybe even more importantly, the key represents your own freedom. Maybe you've got anger and resentment and bitterness that's locked up in your heart. Anger towards an ex, bitterness towards an in-law, resentment towards a former friend or family member or co-worker or classmate. There's that person that you need to forgive and, and if you can, to say those three words, I forgive you. Maybe you need to be forgiven. Think of the person that you've wronged and say these three words. Practice with me. Please forgive me. Both of those are hard things to say sometimes. I forgive you or please forgive me. Now, if you can make amends without causing more harm, Go make a plan to say those three words to some person this week. Please forgive me. It's hard for us humans. It's easy for dogs. Doesn't matter if you kick your dog. They forget that, or at least they choose to and they forgive, right? Your dog will love you anyway. Dogs forgive easily. People who realize that they are forgiven by a loving God, that they have received grace and mercy that they don't deserve, those people forgive as well. Maybe like this old dog, you can learn that new trick and learn to receive and to give forgiveness. Oh, that it may be so. Amen. Amen. Most of all, they've seen me torn.
remember running down the hallway, playing hide and seek. I didn't know that I was searching for someone to notice me. I felt alone and undiscovered, but old enough to understand. Just when I'm supposed to be learning to love, you let me down again. Seven times, seventy times, I'll do what it takes to make it right. I thought the pain was here to stay, but for No matter how many times you went around, I'm all right now. God picked up my heart and held me through and shined a light on the one thing left to do. And that's for kids. Seven times, seventy times, I'll do what it takes to make it right. I thought the pain was here to stay, but forgiveness made a way. Seven times, seventy times, there's healing in the house tonight. I'm reaching up to pull it down. Since the day that I was born When we look over our shoulders at fear shadowing us today, you go before us into tomorrow, making a path through the sea of yesterday's doubts. When our legs tremble from the effort of standing up for what you hope for all creation, you stand at our side, offering your hopes strength. Cloud of grace, we offer our love to you. When we turn our hearts into deserts of stony bitterness, you transform them into oases of joy. When we come up with all sort of rules for those who come to us seeking to find you, you tear up the list, stretching wide your arms in welcoming grace. Servant of all, we offer our lives to you. When we would clasp old worries to our hearts, you open our eyes to that hope which paves the path ahead of us. When we spend each day consumed with doubts and fears, you remind us that this day is the time to honor God by serving God's children. Mist of mercy, we offer our hearts to you. God in community, holy and one, as you are all to us. So we would offer all we are to you, even as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One, two, three, four. I walk a bit different now. 
Now that my heart's been found, nothing really feels the same. I hold my head a bit higher, I lift my voice a bit louder. Yeah, something inside has changed. I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer. Cause I've been set free. I am a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing, testifier. Cause I've been redeemed. I am a believer. not my home. I know I don't walk alone. No matter what comes my way. I have peace through the trouble. I have joy through the struggle. And now my hope's in a brighter day. I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer. Cause I've been set free. Your heart on fire, freedom singing, testifier. Cause I've been redeemed. I am a believer. I am a child of the Father, an orphan no longer. No doubt about who I am. I'm in the hands of the healer. Just an overcomer, cause I've been set free. Yeah, I am a mountain mover, water walker, more than just an overcomer, cause I've been set free. I am a gospel preacher, heart on fire, freedom singing, testifier. As we are all fellow believers, may we demonstrate what we have heard once again this morning. May we ask for forgiveness and truly forgive in return. If you've been enjoying these puppy stories as much as I have been, don't fret. There's one more Sunday to this sermon series. Next week, we get to celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. So make sure you bring your party gear to online service next Sunday morning. But as we say goodbye today, please join us in our benediction.